What's up, Money Gang? It's the Multitasker, Money Adventure. And you're probably wondering, and especially to you ain't no gangster, have I seen Avengers Endgame? Well, the answer is you're in luck. I have seen it twice. Back in 2012, I seen the first Avengers movie five times in the theater because it was a, it was a big blockbuster hit. And seeing it right now, it's, I enjoyed it. Because I knew what was gonna eventually gonna happen through the from the beginning to the end, especially everything that happened with the Infinity War. So, and the truth is, I I, I wanted to make a review for it, but but I wanted to give my peeps a chance to see this before I can make this video. So I just simply just wait until the, all the, the all the smoke is cleared up. Simply just wait for the weekend to be over, and that was. That would give some some time to give you know to reflect and just how much they enjoyed that movie because yes it was long it was supposed to be about like three hours but it was worth to know that that of the detailing of every story that everything that happened is all all of this is is about building up and try to reform of the Earth's mightiest heroes and that's what it's all about and this one. It literally takes the cake and how epic it was. So, yeah, I just want to wait it out until everybody get a chance to see it. And for those who are still planning on it, because it is Tuesday, so it's it's cheap to go into to go into theaters in, in, in the afternoon. So, if you are still planning it, don't watch this video because I am going to... Excuse me. This is a chance for me to, to, to have a little time to talk about it exactly how it went down, and there will be some highlight m moments, and not to mention there are some, some references that was based on the comics that I read, and that basically gave me deja vu moment. So brace yourselves because yes, this is the movie review of Avengers so, Endgame. Yes, what I think about the movie, I loved it. That's one of the reasons why I enjoyed reading Marvel comics, even from the from, of the events of last year or the next or the current. That's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of Spider-Man, Avengers, Wolverine, and X-Men. You know the rest. So let's start off from, from as much as as picking it as I can without dragging it this out any further. So. The beginning of the movie that you see Clint is basically is in house arrest and he can care less about that he just wanted to spend his days with his family and teaching his daughter how to the, the fire arrow with the perfect accuracy and next thing you know Laura and the kids were vanished you know the word technically the word vanish is, is a never another term for erased and He's didn't quite understand what's going on, and he's not even aware that, that it's Thanos happened. And fast forward, that everything that happened in the Infinity War, that was just the, the beginning. Because you see, Tony is drifted in Rocket's ship with Nebula within 22 days has been passed with less food, less oxygen, and that... He was eventually was gonna he was gonna die of a, of starvation and exhaustion. So he made a record of the, a message to his helmet to Pepper if she still exists. He passed out, and next thing to know, a shine light has been has appeared, but it was actually Carol finally shows up and brings the ship back to Earth. And lo and behold, Pepper is still alive. But the damage was already made, and that Tony is, it's just, I don't know what else to say, but Tony was just, he is, he, he's a mess. And, it, and his emotions and mentally is just, it's, it's out of whack. It's because the fact that not only he, he failed to stop Thanos, but he also failed to to protect or to save Peter. And he just, he let it, 
being erased that that was his that was his downfall and that was just he's just unbalanced and that he he literally almost took the took the arc we took the arc reactor out of him and then he passed out and but the and the rest of the team what's left of it is just felt broken emotionally and outnumbered and most of all it's just completely that just it is com com completely defeated and now the fact that Carol is here and that her op her option is only one thing is to kill Thanos and so so now they basically trying to figure out is where is he now until Nebula instantly remembers about one thing that that once his 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 task is complete and that all the thing he wants to do is be as a farmer because that's how it originally that that started out in, in the early comics and back in the 80s once the the divinity once he has divinity stones the way he wanted and that he would basically in a way of of his retirement plan and that's where the that the where a rocket in that, that picked up of energy readings that spiked up two days ago to this unremoted planet that where Thanos is staying and the, t and the team is, is, is geared up and just bring nothing but hell to him and there was nobody in that planet it was just it was just Thanos all by himself and by now you probably realize that that he's still wearing the the, the, the gauntlet for, for the stones it's it is damaged beyond repair, and you get I, I can instantly see that he could he's barely walking. He's like he's just having a hard time trying to have a little bit function to it on 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 his other side. And right out of second, Charles just blasts out with a, with photon energy and just and the Hulkbuster armor just rised up, try to hold him. And Thor instantly cut, hacked his hand off, and that's when they realized that that the stones are not in the gauntlet. And Thanos just confessed of what happened. Not only he used the stones to to wipe out half a billion of the of the people on Earth, but he also used the stones to destroy the stones, reduced to atoms. And they were, and the team was basically having that disbelief. But Thanos never lies. And out of nowhere, Thor just sliced his head off. And they're going like, "Whoa, what did you do?" I could barely hear what Thor's trying to say. It's like he goes like. Cause I wanted to, and that was it. And there was, there was, this was a point of now the fact that the stones are, 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 are just completely destroyed. There, now they have no options because th there, there isn't. There's no way that to fix things back, and that's where, where you see that line goes five years later. And it's just this was the point of the, the, that how this is becoming of the dark and gr grim of of the earth is now it's just half of people are still alive and yet they can't they can't get over the, the, the fact that, that their loved ones wives children grandparents boyfriend girlfriend lovers that they they're gone some are trying to accept what it is to move on but then there are some are just some are just just completely disarray and that's what's happening to the Avengers that, that some are willing to continue to keep the fight and then there are some are just went to their separate ways 
so the rest of the Avengers are going to try to monitor every every continent around the, around the world for anything that's basically the, making it of uh, the crime rates. And that Rhodey informed Nat that that he was helping with with the federales in Mexico. That that the few bodies are piled up. That they are actually the what's left of the car, of the cartel. He knew it was it, it was Barton. And that, and I could instantly see that Natasha's emotions start to break down because I could, she could, I, she, I could imagine what she's going going through right now because of of the loss of his family. That's basically that's driven to the edge of to a darker path, and it's just. It was just, it was just, it was so deep and dark. It was very hard. And that's when he got an in-call message from the outside of the compound that Scott Lang actually shows up. Now, before that happened, let's go back at the storage, uh, uh, to the storage garage where that ugly brown fan, <laughs> that's the property of Scott, Scott Lang. And that rat just peered out of nowhere, just just crawling to the to the front of the of the of the seat, and that basically reactivated the machine that that Scott was stuck in to the quantum to the quantum realm that ended in the Ant Man and Wasp sequel. Now he just got back and realized that things have changed for the for, for the last five years, and. The only thing that's, that's that's the only thing on his mind is where is his daughter? But luckily, she didn't got erased either, except that she's got big, so she's she's a teenager. So believe it or not, that's a little surprise, and that's a little reference to the, of the Young Avengers that you get to see the teenage the daughter of Cassie Cassie Lang. So. That will be another time Back to talk to the fast forward of right now that through and through Scott's time and start to have these rambling thoughts that being inside at the quantum realm that basically that how the laws and the dimensions are completely different from the outside world. For them, it was about five years that that's passed by. But for him being stuck into this to this tiny realm, it was all about five hours. And that made some, made a suggestion of the of a theoretically what if there's a way to travel through the through that quantum realm and be able to go through the time that basically this is before Thanos happened in which that in the case of that it was time traveling it it is, sounds like it's a far fetch but it it's clear that this is the only chance they need so they only need they need brains behind it to, to, to put put the works into it, but unfortunately Tony is refused to do it because for the past five years that if you recall that Tony wanted to marry Pepper for a long time and that which that he did except that they have a it's a it's a girl named Morgan Stark and that's the only thing he's thinking of right now because. For for Tony, it's about a second chance for him that that he can take this moment, but he's unwilling to help, and that Steve realized that that he gets the picture because he doesn't want no part of it, and you can't blame him though because everything that happened is just it was just too much, and so and the next thing they want they need need a, a bigger help is better. And let me tell you about Big Banner because you know I never would have thought I'd get to see the the intelligent Hulk, or I like to call it the Pantheon Hulk. Now, seeing this because this is one of the one of the Hulk's personas in in the history of Hulk. Never thought I would get to get a chance to see this in in a live adaption film because this is the Hulk we're talking about. So 18 months for him that through the struggle of the of the loss for for the Hulk and the loss for Banner and that 
Banner tried to th try to thought a way to try to, to solve that issue, and that using his intelligence to control the Hulk, and that to, to his to his quote unquote for the best of the both of the worlds that he said. I, I, I just like it. it. It's it's actually cool that we get the get that for me it was cool to see that of that adaption of the of the Pathion Hulk to be in this film. So it was it was cool. It was it was it was nice. So, so he's a little bit crossover with of Joe Fix It, but not entirely. It's just it's basically it's just Hulk with the with the bet with the intelligent mind. So for him, this is going to be a far fetch for uh, of his territory when it comes to the quantum theory and the time the, the time traveling. That it's to him, it's impossible. And so they basically try to, to to try to make it work. And last night, that Tony couldn't stop thinking about Peter. It was obviously that he couldn't he couldn't let this let this slide. So. He and Friday decided to des design of a machine that can actually fluctuate it with the time of the of the of the quantum realm dimension that that Scott was in, and, and he fixed it. Next day, that the so-called tests of the time traveling didn't go well. So yeah, it went from being as a an old man to an infant, and I I love the fact that Tony realized how the t Steve's expression of that the, the the test results didn't go well, and just goes out and say, "Well, I fixed it." And I also like the fact that 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 Tony and Steve got a, got a little closure. Because of everything that happened in Berlin, and uh, you know, for, uh, when I say Berlin, I talk about the uh, Captain America Civil War. That they they finally we solved the, of their issues and realized that this is this has got to be important because they need to find a way to, to get the Infinity Stones. And if it, and if this works, and that. Everything can if they could bring people back of of this current timeline, and that everything would be normal in that way. That that Tony will keep his priority. That was that was the whole deal about it, and that and they're definitely good. And they and they and they actually shake hands as an exchange to to make it to, to make it work. And, and instantly they he gave his shield back. And now is the, the the toughest part was trying to reform the team, bringing back to the team. It is not that easy. And how funny it was that Scott was just having tacos. Obviously, it was a Taco Tuesday, and that the ship just crashed, just landed right into it of of a plain sight field. And Nebula just informed Rhodey, being like, "Careful, Rhodey, careful with the of the landing site, because it's an idiot in a way." <laughs> and the phrase, "Hey, what's up there?" The regular size that man, and just Banner was just a pacifist, just give him a, a free taco on his behalf. That was that was cute. That was or that was now cute. living in the new Asgard. Uh, which is basically, it's just, they never exactly exact where the, what's the actual name of the country, but it's definitely, the, the, it's held at, at the fish port. And I will say that's a nice comic reference because in the world of comics of Thor that, no, excuse me, not only that he's been brought back into the world, that he's also trying to resurrect his fellow people that was being trapped in the, in the human incarnation of Midgard and instantly that created the, of the new Asgard in the home of Texas. And speaking of Thor, Jesus Christ, I I never thought I'd see him. I know the fact that, that 
that he's dealing with of the pain of loss, but I never would have imagined that he was that he was mentally broken. And that the fact that he let himself go, that is funny, and yet that is just he's just a mess. And and, and I can and, and I can I can understand why because it didn't take long to realize that the because ever since the what Thanos did to his people, he wanted payback. And that and yeah, he cut his head off. But it didn't satisfy him enough to realize that, that it was he felt empty. And he's just he reeks of booze. He's all bloated and playing Fortnite. Yeah, playing Fortnite with Cork and Meek. Nice to see them, by the way. <laughs> but this is just... Mm. Thor needs some help. And as for Clint, I had a feeling that exactly what he's going through right now. And he's just... He's snap. I mean, he's literally snap and just on a hell-bent of... of of a vigilante as Rodin. And I will say I did like the, the design and this was act, actually a fan service because because of the concept of the Ronin was such a popularity since in, in the, the pages of New Avengers. It was it was a it, it was it was worth to see it. And and I know how the signs is completely different, but at the same time it, it's just this is something we wanted to see for a very long time. And and it just and it just just mutilated. I mean, I'm sorry. When I say mutilated, I'm just saying that, that he just he's just slicing dice of the head member of the yakuza. And now Natasha is here to, to simply to convince to come back because there's a way that that we can fix all of this. And Clint was just. It's emotionally disturbed. I mean, you could tell how frustrated he is of the pain of the loss of his family. But now they found a way to to fix this. And of course, even for, for Banner, it's just impossible because that it's when it comes to time traveling, it doesn't work the way how it is like in, in the movies. Because yes, it was funny to have a lot of a lot of cameos of the of a sci-fi mil um, sci-fi films like Terminator, Back to the Future, T Hot Top Time Machine. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah. But the thing is, from Banner's point of view, if you if you try to change the past, the the present is the past, and there is no future. It is basically a complex of of the paradoxes. But of course, in the world of comics, that the the, the time, the space time continuum, the, it, it doesn't matter because it, it broke. Ever since the, the the ending of Age of Ultron, it, it it disrupted and it just exploded. So it doesn't even doesn't matter anymore. So that it's just what it is. <laughs>